present you uh, the Parliament collection, the Parliament Corpus. I will present it very shortly. And then I will formulate two questions related to this data set. And I will answer them using the context system where the Parliament Corpus is available and using a programming code. I am aware that we declare our course programming free course. That still applies, but I want to demonstrate to you a very simple code to inspire you and to show you that at some level there is no reason to, to worry. And uh, Irka just presented presented to you query in uh, in Prague markup language and it is uh, I I can see it as a sort of programming as well <laughs> so this this lesson is is uh, is on programming in, in some sense uh, Parliament is a project of uh, compiling records of parliamentary debates into uniformly annotated multilingual corpora. Uh, this is uh, financially supported by, by Clarin, and everything you want to know about this project, uh, please visit the link uh, provided here in, on this page. Uh, structure, structure, and and language. It, it is a it is a different. Uh, it is a different. Speaking about, uh, uh, or we were just searching under Amazon collection, and uh, now I'm about to I'm about to speak I'm about to speak uh, parliamentary debates. Uh, it is a different different gen genre. And its structure and its language is, uh, or make them uh, an important object of uh, of study in in a wide range of disciplines, in uh, social science, sciences and humanities, such as political science, sociology, history, discourse analysis, social social linguistics, and and, and etc. And for a wide range of tasks. Parliamentary data must be easily findable and accessible and encoded according to international standards and, if possible, with rich and correct annotations and metadata. So the main goal of, of the Parliament project or the main goals of the Parliament projects are compiling de debates into, into a harmonized uh, text and TEI encoding, TEI stands for Text Encoding Initiative. Uh, then the second uh, goal is uh, linguistic processing. In other words, to enrich data using natural language processing procedures, and then making uh, the data available and accessible uh, using some popular, popular systems. Uh, so far, the Parliament Corpora have been published in three versions. Version 1.0 contained the initial four Croatian, Bulgarian, Polish and Slovenian Corpora, with the main intention to serve as a model uh, for what we needed to be done by the 13 new um, partners, let's say. Version 2.0 was released towards the end of the first of the parliament project phase of the first phase as the near final version of the corpora. Uh, while it was still missing some languages, the main reason for this re release was to enable the parliament data to be used in the scope of the Helsinki Digital Humanities Hackathon. So the practical, uh, practical work with with the data, and the experience of the participants uh, was very welcome, and led to changes of several aspects of the final release version two point one of the of the project. So here I present you the very basic 
characteristics of the version 2.1 of the Parliament project. Uh, this collection uh, contains corpora of 17 European parliaments. Here you can see the list of languages. Uh, here is the information, the data of which houses are present in, in the corpus, uh, how many terms are included in, in, in the data, and uh, here is the time period covered in the, in the data. And even more, we can see the number of years, number of million of words per year, and the total number of, of million of words in the collection. So for example, for Czech, you can see that uh, the, 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 the subcorpus sub uh, contains the data uh, from the meetings of the, of the lower house of the parliament of the Czech Republic. Uh, the, 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 the text or the data uh, covers, two, covers two period, two terms, uh, starting, starting in November 2013 and uh, uh, the, till the, 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 the April of 2021. 20, and total amount of, of words in the Czech collection is uh, 22 million words. The, the data for the Czech data, uh, we scrap the data of the stenographic, namely the stenographic protocols from joint Czech and Slovak digital parliamentary uh, library, where the protocols are, are available for each meeting. And metadata about, about uh, persons and organizations was extracted as a database uh, dump uh, from, uh, from the website of the Czech uh, Republic uh, government. More details in the, on, on this collection are available in this in this article. Uh, all the seventeen all the seventeen corpora are available as as data uh, via GitHub and uh, and on the on the, in the Clarin, Clarin Slovenian Clarin uh, repository. And they are also available uh, through through uh, concordances, namely using the in in no sketch engine and in context. Here are the persistent uh, persistent identifi identifiers where you can download the data uh, and to to experiment them. Uh, the data uh, are available in two versions. In, in here on in this link, you can download the data converted into, into the TEI format. And here in this link, uh, you can download them with, uh, with linguistic uh, annotations. For example, check date, for check data, we use UDPipe to, to do morphological and syntactic annotation. And uh, we use name tech system to, to detect and classify name entities in, in, the, in the data. <clears throat> now I will focus on, uh, on this system, on this uh, concordancer context and, uh, and uh, to, um, to understand well, what uh, what uh, this system is useful for? Uh, I have to first, let's say, define or describe what is a concordance. Concordance is a list that uh, shows every example of a particular word that is used in the, in in the books, uh, newspapers or any text, simply, uh, simply text that is di digitized and that is available in, uh, for example, in this system. For example, to illustrate it, 
here, uh, this is a screenshot taken, uh, taken from context and uh, each line uh, contain concordance. To, to, search, uh, to search this collection, I formulate two use cases or two research questions. The first one is how many times did the speakers say or mention or they speak about leaving the European Union in their speeches? And the second question is how did the overall frequency of this text or of the, of the mention uh, change over time? So for there are there are three examples uh, taken from the from the English part of the Parliament uh, collection, and in the first sentence we read: "As we leave the European Union, da, 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 uh, so that we have a smooth transition from where we are today to leaving the European Union, or." to be able to have its own free trade policy once we have left the European Union. Uh, and so we are interested in, uh, in, in the sentences where speakers mention uh, men or speak about leaving the European Union. And Namely, we are interested in the four forms of the basic form leave. Leave, but the third and the third person singular simple present indicative form leaves, then past part, then, then sorry, past simple left, and present participate leaving. Uh, to answer these questions, we use uh, Parliament, the English, the English subset of, of, uh, of the Parliament collection uh, containing data from the British Parliament. And uh, to, to answer the questions, uh, we combine context search, so searching uh, data in, in context, and then uh, using a simple code written uh, using R, R language. So to see uh, where or what we would like to see at the end of our, uh, of our research, uh, here is the answer to the first question. Uh, so how many times did the speakers say P -p -p in their speeches? Here is a table. Uh, of two columns, column speaker and column frequency. In this column, in the column uh, uh, name speaker, we can see a list of the speakers. And here we can read how many times they mentioned uh, or they were speaking about uh, leaving the European Union. So this, this list is ordered in, in, uh, in, uh, in a decreasing way. Right? So we can see, for example, that, uh, that Therese Mary May uh, mentioned leaving the European Union 736 times. Great majority of, of occurrences uh, belong to, to uh, Therese May. You can download this table uh, from our our website. Website. Uh, I posted it on on uh, on our website. And this plot is the answer to the que second questions. How did the overall frequency of the text change over time? The the English collection covers the period starting in January two thousand fifteen. And uh, actually, uh, March uh, 2021, but there was no uh, occurrence of, of, uh, of a string leaving, leaving the European uh, Union. 
So we can see the distribution of, uh, of, uh, of, of the frequencies of, of the given text. And uh, to, to discuss uh, some trends, if we observe uh, some trends, uh, I highlighted two, uh, I would say, two important milestones. Uh, the first one is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is June 2016, where the, the Brexit, Brexit referendum uh, was, uh, was organized so on, uh, on, uh, on the 20th. 3rd uh, June 2016, the Brexit uh, referendum took place to ask people whether the, the country should remain a member of, uh, of the European Union or if uh, they, should, uh, they should leave. And the, the referendum resulted in almost 52% uh, of the votes cars being in favor of leaving the, uh, the European uh, Union. And the, the result was finally implemented on the uh, 31st of January, 2020. Okay, so how, how to get uh, this table and how to, how to plot this, uh, this, uh, this figure? So let's start uh, in uh, in the context system. So if you if you visit this web page, uh, you can see uh, here number of uh, of um, keywords, and one of them is parliament. So that's that's the direction uh, where we uh, where we are heading for. Then let's uh let's enter enter a query so we search for uh occurrences of uh, of four tokens with these basic forms so first lemma is leave then the european union uh we selected the Parliament uh, GB 2.1, the corpus uh, for searching, and we have to switch advanced query on to, to be able to enter query in C, uh, CQL language. Irka, Irka already mentioned in this language, and uh, I recommend you to, uh, to get back to his lecture on this on this language in in the lecture point number five so here is a window where we enter enter our query and here we can read the results in total uh more than more than eight thousand hits uh, occurring or or query very matches uh, are in this in in this collection and even and since we are and uh, we are interested in the speakers and 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 the time where when they mention the the given text so to see both speakers and time be sure that you that you that the option speech from and speech speaker name is active to to set up various attributes go to this link to this page view and here you can you can set up what you want to see here if you click on the on the on the red text you can you can see the context uh, of of uh, of this result or, or, or the, this uh, query match and if you click on this part you can get uh, metadata about about the speaker so for example here uh, we can see 
that the that the that the speaker name is James Peter Brokenshire, and uh, he is a member of the Conservative Party. Uh, uh, he's a man. It, it, he is a member of of Parliament, and uh, and so on and so on. Uh, then we would like to save these results. So here is in, in the menu, we can see save link. When you click, uh, click on this link, uh, you can read the message that one click saving of data to the comma separated value format saves at, mo at most 10,000 lines. Here we are. We are lucky because the total. Oh, sorry. The total number of uh, of uh, occurrences is less than ten thousand times. To if uh, working with more uh, with more hits, let's say, uh, then I recommend uh, to to download the data set and uh, and extract data uh, uh, outside outside the context. So using, using uh, this uh, option, we can save the results. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I uploaded uh, this file uh, onto our web page. So you can, you can check, uh, you can check its, its content. Okay, so now we have, a, we have a results. And uh, we would like to, to, to process them to answer uh, our two questions. And uh, to, to do it, I, I will use the R system. So here are the links uh, to the homepage uh, for, of, this, of this system. And namely, I will be using the RR Studio. So again, you can you can down, down, download it and install it. R is an open source programming language for statistical computing and graphics, and it provides a, a wide variety of uh, statistical and graphical techniques, and is highly highly extensible. It is, uh, uh, it is available as, uh, as free software. And RStudio develops free and open tools for, uh, for R language. The code or the script uh, that I will be presenting you uh, is, is available on our web page as well. So you can, you can download it and, and run it. As soon as you install R and R Studio, you can run uh, this this code. So I will switch this presentation into into the R Studio, but before that, uh, let me let me explain you what you will see. So the the window of R Studio is is divided into four windows here. Uh, in, in the left part, it is editor and uh, 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 editor and uh, where you can uh, edit edit your or create uh, your code. Uh, here in this part, there is a console to run uh, to run the code or, or its its uh, its instructions. And on the right side, uh, we can read the data we are working with. And here uh, in this part, uh, we can see the plots uh, we are drawing uh, using, using this code. So now let me share us to the window. I hope that you can read it. Okay, so uh, so I mm, so my idea is to go 
uh, line by line and explain you uh, what we, we can expect uh, if we run a particle, particle instruction. Uh, so at the very beginning, we have to read the data we want to process. We downloaded the data from the context system, and it is a, it is a file in a, in a comma-separated value format. Here, uh, as a separator, uh, the semicolon is used. So let me run this format and you can see that the file was uploaded into R. It contains more than 8,000 observations of, and five variables. I should, uh, I should highlight that uh, the R language is being developed by mathematician, uh, mathematician mostly. So they use uh, termin they use mostly ma terminology or mathematical terminology. So they we used we use uh, a word example, and they use observation, and we speak about features or attributes of examples, and they use word variable. So let's view the data. You can see that the file, the input file, contains five columns. Uh, in the first column, we can read the time when a particle speaker mentioned leaving or was speaking about leaving the European Union. Here we can read the, the query matches. And in this column, here we can read the left context, and here we can read the right context. So let me get back to the code. And uh, they use the the attributes or the the variables names v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 let's re rename them uh in a more uh in a more nice words let's say right. so we re rename the first variable to date second to speaker left meaning left context mention meaning query matches and write context. Then let's view. view Sorry, the may case. I ask yeah. anything? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I would like to know what's the logic of uh, that the arrows in this renamed attributes are from right to left as mm -hmm. for me would make uh, more sense from left to right? Uh, you can use equal sign. Okay. And then I think it works the same yeah, way. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you can, instead of arrows, you can use equal sign. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's check the data again. And then now we can see uh, the name columns uh, in a way that we, uh, we, we simply rename them to understand the data better. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, see how many times did the speakers mention leaving the European Union in their speeches. So first we have to get the number of mentions for each speaker. This is the notation uh, to read the, the column of speakers. So going back to the data, here is the column speaker. And to read this vector or this list, we, use, we can use this notation. Simply data, dollar sign, and uh, column specification. 
then using the the functions table you we can get uh, the number for each speaker we can get the number or how many times the given speaker occurs in the table in other words how many times the given given speaker mention uh, the text uh, leaving the european union yeah. Then for further processing, we have to re retype the internal structure of this table, of this table, uh, table so that we, we want to represent it as a data frame. So here we can see uh, uh, a new data in, uh, in, uh, in, in R. It is a uh, it is a frame of uh, 941 examples of two variables. So let's check its structure. Uh, summary, uh, speaker, equal. Oh, oh, sorry, I should do instead of use structure, it's better, structure. It is a structure of two variables, and for each uh, speaker, we know the frequency of the text. And let's rank the speakers in decreasing order. Right? So we order the we order the speakers uh, uh, according to the the frequencies. Again, uh, the running this this uh, instruction, uh, we can see that uh, there are two variables, var one and frequent, and uh, let's rename them uh, to un again to understand the the data better. So first, let's re rename the first column speaker and the second column frequency. So if we check names of S, then we can see speaker and frequency. And for it, one can, uh, or for further processing, uh, we can export this data frame uh, into, into file. So for example, here, we would like to uh, save it as a, as a file in a comma separated value format. So you can use this, this, uh, this uh, function, write table, and we are saying what we would like to export to specify the name of the file uh, and to see and to, to use a semicolon as a, as, a, as a column separator. And if you check our website, website you can see this file uh, uploaded there. So that's the way how we can get or how we uh, how we can answer this first question. The second question was how did the overall frequency of the text change over time? Uh, so we uh, we want to get the number of mentions for each month. Months. So the date uh, the date format uh is uh, in the form of year months and date so here using this format we just want to extract uh year and months it's a it's a more technical uh technical part of of this code right? so let's let's do it and again uh, and we are focusing on the column date Right. So we approach this column uh, using this notation D, that's the data set we are working with, dollar sign, and the column uh, with the name date. So now T is a vector, is a vector of, of, uh, of dates. 
and let's uh, visualize the data. So we use the function plot and uh, the we would like to visualize the output of this format. Right? So using this function that we used uh, for, for the question uh, one table, and if we run it, so we can see how many times was the given text mentioned in the given months. So for example, uh, leaving the United Euro Union was mentioned 47 times in June 2015, or it was mentioned 206 times in January 2020. So we are going to visualize this table as a, as a graph. And we hear uh, the data about the, 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 the that describes uh, describes the plot. So for example, here is the title, uh, uh, caption of the x-axis, caption of the y-axis, uh, how big uh, the font should be, and how to orientate uh, uh, the, the x-axis uh, uh, caption. So here on the x-axis, we read the date, on y-axis, we read the number of uh, leaving European Union mentions, and uh, these uh, these lines uh, visualizes the number of mentions in in the given months. Right? So we can, for example, see that in January 2019 there is the highest frequency of 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 the text. And to, to add the information about the Brexit referendum and about the final implementation of, the, of its results, uh, uh, we just, uh, yeah, so here is the sequence of instructions to add uh, the information about the Brexit, Brexit and uh, about uh, the, it's, it's the, the implementation. So, uh, so here I just, uh, so the, 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 the referendum was organized in, in June. So uh, I want to get the number of months preceding this, uh, this month. So that's the B. Then I want to get the number of months preceding uh, this, the, the implementation date. And uh, I want to highlight these two dates. So I create the vector of, of them. And uh, here is the way how to make these these dates uh, how to how to uh, draw them in in red color and using the function text we add these two texts UK uh, referendum and UK leaving the EU 